name is Betty Ball. Mine is Stevie B. And this is Speak Up Sunland. Welcome to the podcast. You know what we do by now, don't you? Each week we do something like a different project or we'll do an event or a topic that affects Sunland. So this one we're talking about how Sunland has been named the best place to live in the UK. Yes. If you are under the age of 30. Oh, that's not me. Uh huh. <laughs> I am. <laughs> It's a study by a finance firm called One Family, with about 2,000 people taking part across 35 UK cities. It takes into account average salaries, rent, property prices, commuting costs, as well as satisfaction and happiness. However, you measure that is completely up to you. How do you measure that? Some things are just kept in person. <laughs> uh, yeah, mm, yes, you talked about something specific, I guess. Then, right? Okay, don't talk about it, Steve. So here's the rankings. Drum roll, please! Number five. Liverpool. L- Liverpool. Number two. Number four. Milton Keynes. Number three. Aberdeen. Number two. Leeds Chuck. And number one! Sunderland, 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 Mackham's win, Sunderland. So how? I'm quite impressed. You, you sound like surprised though. Why, why are, you, are you surprised? I'm a little bit surprised. Yeah, yeah. A little bit, but not I massively. I am impressed, just speaking of the fact that Newcastle only came 28th. Ah, like. <laughs> uh, so you're now laughing at Newcastle. That's interesting, isn't it? That's only because Sunderland became number one. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> but I am very pleased for Sunderland because it has been working really hard and all the big events seem to happen up here, so I'm not surprised. Because we're great. That's why. Hi, is there eating small doses? It's the kind of thing we'd love to hear your thoughts on. You should know how to contact with by now, though. I don't even know why we're going through this. Because what about if someone's just listened for the first time? And if you are, thank you very much for listening. That's true. Bravo. Oh, am I right? Give us a pen. I need to write so that, that down. that was the... I don't know. That was the 30th of November. At, what time? I don't know. Ten past six. It's only took me, like, what, 14 episodes for you to say you're right? So episode 28 is the next time I'm going to be right. Then, Probably. Okay. Another year's time. So how do they get involved then? You need to get in touch with us on Speak Up Sun on Twitter. Or search for Speak Up Sunland on Facebook. So we went out to ask young people under 30 from across the northeast who who set up businesses based here in Sunderland. Some of them live here, some of them commute regularly. My name is Ethan Lawson Marshall and I run Intuit Media. Based in Sunderland, Digital Solutions Company. I'm Abby. I am the financial director of Intuit Media, based in Sunderland. Uh, I'm from County Durham originally, so not too far. Went to uni in Sunderland, so place we know well. Hi, I'm Fern Snailham, and I'm the founder of Unique Staffing. Unique Staffing is a premium promotional and events staffing agency, and we are based in Sunderland, um, but we do cover UK wide. Hello, my name is Johnny Chambers. Uh, I'm a small business owner and local radio presenter. Newcastle is where I broadcast from, but I live in Sunderland. So I'm from Stanley, um, right out in the sticks, yeah. So it's kind of near Beamish Museum, um, if you know that. So about half an hour from Sunderland, about 20 minutes from Newcastle. But the news apparently did not go down well with everyone. Our producer Jay just sent us this video right here. Shall we take a listen? I think we should. I generally think the ears are going to burn. I think they're going to fall off. Believe it or not, somebody has said that the best place to live if you're under 30 uh, is uh, Sunderland. And not only is it the best place to live in this country, but it's also the best place to work. Now, I don't know anyone uh, who likes Sunderland. I don't know anyone who's been there that says it's anything other than a completely awful, ghastly place. And I'm talking about people who studied there, right? Now, we tried to find somebody from Sunderland to actually defend it. But all we could find was Andy Dawson, podcaster and TalkSport presenter, who's, of course, from uh, nearby Middlesbrough. Andy, a very good uh, morning to you. Welcome. Hi, I'm Mike. I'm from Sunderland, actually. Oh, I thought you were from Middlesbrough. No. Right. So, what's great about Sunderland? Um, <clears throat> when was the last time you were in Sunderland, Mike? I've never been there. Huh. Right. So, you've just said that it's a dump, but you've never been. Yeah, because everyone I know who's ever been there says it's a dump, and that's why I've never been. Right. Okay. Um... I presume it's famous for its sense of humour, Andy. Oh, you know what? I can't be bothered with this. You can't be bothered with what? Oh, dear. Andy Dawson has hung up the phone, thereby proving that Sunderland is a very unwelcoming part of the world. That is quite extraordinary. Poor old Andy. I wonder why he doesn't like uh, talking about Sunderland. Ooh. Because, because Maybe you're... somebody can help us out. 0344 a 499. Wow. How can you automatically not like somebody? <laughs> <sighs> 
I'm going to, I'm like a volcano ready to erupt here. He's on talk radio from 10am till 1. And oh wow. But isn't that typical? This is where I get frustrated when people have an opinion, but they've got, they've got based on nothing, no research. And this is a man who's a journalist as well. He's done no research. He's based his opinion on someone else's opinion. It's a feature that he's chose to have on his show. So he's clearly not doing that much research on it, but he's got an opinion. But it's actually not his opinion, it's someone else's opinion. The thing is, though, everyone is entitled to their opinion. And you can take on somebody's opinion or not take somebody's opinion. But I generally think you should come down to Sunderland. I actually personally invite Mike Graham to come down to Sunderland and we will show him how fantastic the city is and the reason why it is voted number one. I want to find out where he was born and where he lives. And if it's clearly much better than Sunderland, that's been voted number one, by the way, I'll keep telling you that. So if you're listening, Mike Graham, I'm inviting you. Betty Ball from Speak Up Sunderland, that is a podcast entirely about Sunderland, is inviting you to come up and I will show you why Sunderland has been named the best place to live in the UK. We'll even be friendly to you. Well, for five minutes anyway. Well, I'll just tame, I'll tame Stevie. (sighs) (laughs) And breathe. So we heard what a Sunderland outsider thinks. Who's never been here before? Who's never been here before? I'll say that again. Who's never been here before? (laughs) So let's see if it's any different for people living and working in the city. Sunderland always gets a bad rap, no matter where it's presented, whether it's presented on national media, whether it's you know someone that you meet, they go, "Are oh, you from Sunderland?" Because instantly they just assume you're a Geordie, because um, apparently you know everyone in the northeast is from Newcastle. I'm Sunderland born and bred, and I've always been really proud to say that I'm from Sunderland. And everyone that I know that's studied here, you know, that's come here in, from different parts of the UK all rave about how wonderful the place is and how much they love it and how much they miss it when they move away. And I think that's down to the fact that Sunderland isn't pretentious, it doesn't kind of think of itself as as Newcastle's poorer brother as everyone else kind of sees it. We've had a very tough history and a very tough upbringing. You know, we were only a city in 1992, I think it was, and we've not progressed as people would expect us to, and I think that often kind of displays us as as Newcastle's younger brother, but I don't see Sunderland as that. I see it as its own thing. It's got its own accent, its own own dialect, its own identity, and it's just a nice place to be. Everyone's nice. We've got a million and one Gregs as well. I mean, what more could you want? Sunderland's definitely a grown city. There's a lot of great talent coming from the universities. There's a lot of great local businesses as well um, that's popping up and also adding to the city centre. There's a lot in the North East that is starting to happen and the like, Sunderland culture and the city of culture bid was a real like starting point and a lot more stuff is happening in the city and I think that does help and especially because there's so much funding at the moment so there's even more stuff happening that balances out the like affordability of living so it, it's just a really good mix at the moment where like London's too far out the other way where there's loads of stuff happening but it's really expensive whereas up here there's not so much happening but it's really cheap the Sunderland's had a lot of money spent in it and it's really starting to show and I think this is a good thing for the city I agree with that the city is definitely evolving in many many ways like they are reinventing old buildings. They are putting new businesses in. We've got the Hadrian's teepees here. We've got the fountains. We've got the city. We've got lots of lovely things to offer. It's just absolutely transformed. You see, I remember from from like even further back when we had we had industries that were totally re- uh, reliant on like the shipyards. We had uh, we had the coal mines, which was massive as well. We had Vaux breweries, which was an entire brewery here as well. They've all gone. To and be fair, we do have a gin brewery now the poetic license has their own brewery that gets sold around Sunderland, the world now Sunderland still have its own brewery so, i think it's the double, double maxim brewery which yep. is in horton again that doesn't surprise us the city in, when you speak to people in and around like whether it's pubs clubs businesses whatever i think there's there's a genuine everyone's still looking over the shoulder pretty I think, which i think is a lot to do with brexit anyway but i'm not going down that road um but there's a lot of optimism in the, in the city as well which i think this this proves our point 
in terms of an area, I think the North East is quite unique in the fact that it's, it's like quite urban areas where you've got cities, but you've also got coastline, you've also got countryside. So I think that makes up the fact that you can go 10 minutes in the direction, you go up a coastline, 10 minutes the other way, you come to something that's quite rural and quite like villagey and really kind of picturesque. And then you go to somewhere else and then you're suddenly in the middle of Newcastle city centre which is, you know, quite an urban, really, you know, one of the big cities across the country. So I think it's maybe that mix of different things you can go to. I think because Newcastle's a lot more well-known in comparison to Sunderland, if you think of the North East, people always tend to think Geordie's in Newcastle rather than Sunderland. But I think it shows that if it's being voted as number one, that Sunderland is getting, um, earning its place on the map as well. There's a kind of old myth, I think, if, you know, someone from the North goes to the South and suddenly... You don't talk to anyone on the tube or anything where, you know, if you talk to someone on the metro up in the North East, that's not exactly the worst thing you can do when you did. But down in London, you're led to believe that sometimes that is like the do not speak to someone on the tube line under any circumstances. So I think there's that connotation that comes with it, the fact that, you know, there is friendly, there's a mix of different kind of places, urban, more country areas. So I think there's that mix of everything, I suppose. I found London, and this is nothing to do with any kind of North South divide or anything. But when you go down to London, I've been down a couple of times for shows, and when you're on the tube, it's really intimidating. If you compare that to when you go on, say, the metro or public transport, you hear how many times have you been on public transport and a complete stranger, whether you like it or not, will just open up and have a conversation with you. And that's what we do. We're friendly people. But well, the North East is known for being very friendly. We do have the friendly accent. That's normally the Geordies like. We're not going to know that. I do agree, but places like London... It's the capital of England. People are busy. There is a lot of people in a very small space. Mm. And I've been to London quite a few times. And I've always re- wondered why everyone on the tubes are always quiet. You see somebody reading a book, you see somebody on the phone, you see somebody writing something down, you see somebody just concentrating on something else apart from what's around them because it's the only time they get peace and quiet. That's why. And I totally get it. Where... Sunderland, it's not as busy as the capital of England and people are more open because we've got more time we make the time because being the capital it's constant 24-7 bang 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 people come up from London and the first thing they normally say is wow the prices up here are so cheap there's so much land you get so much for your money where if you went down there it's just absolutely obscene the Mm. price you would pay for a three bedroom semi detached or t- or attached house you would probably pay for a garage in london when you so would compare people... the rent prices mhm so i'm not surprised at that not in the slightest i think that the north's a lot more sort of calmer com- in comparison to london it's a lot of hustle bustle everyone's always in a rush um, no one really has time to chat and build relationships where in the north it seems to be a lot more friendly and um, people tend to have a lot more conversations with random people um, compared to when, you, when you're in London. There's a lot of things that the North East gets slated for and Sunderland in particular and I think what really helps is that it is so cheap to live up here that people can forgive like the other things that aren't so good about it because it's so much cheaper than it is to live in London where there's maybe more entertainment, more stuff to do but then the rent is sky high. Cost of living, you know, it is much more affordable up north. I think that there is lots of different areas in the North East, like there's that, that mix of countryside, urban areas and kind of everywhere in between, coastline, beautiful rivers. There's this quayside in Newcastle, you know, down Marina and things in Seaham, where I'm from. There's, there's lots of different places which I think helps that idea of satisfaction. I think for a long time I would always prefer to go to Newcastle and do things in Newcastle, but I went to uni here and spent a lot of time in the city and got to know a lot more about what's happening in Sunderland because it's not so well advertised, there's not so many things that do push what's happening in Sunderland at Newcastle you can just google it and loads of stuff comes up um, and it's not so good in Sunderland but having spent time here I'd probably be more likely to come to Sunderland than Newcastle. Going out for my lunch in Sunderland on a weekday there isn't a great deal to choose from it's a you know fairly basic selection of stuff go out for my lunch in Newcastle um, you've got you know a world of cuisines you know big chain restaurants I mean Sunderland doesn't even have like a pizza express for example you know it's, it's one thing I've always said um, people coming from outside of the city say if they're coming to watch something at the Empire for example particularly if they're coming from Newcastle they're going to look for those big chain restaurants um, they're going to look for those big brands that they recognise that that are present in Newcastle and Sunderland doesn't have any of that there's a lot of really brilliant independent restaurants but 
if you're not from the area, you're not going to take the risk and try them. And I think that's definitely one of the big differences you notice is just the, the presence of those bigger brands. I mean, even in Eldon Square, the fact that, you know, they've got an Apple shop and a Hollister and, you know, all of these big, big anchor stores. You go into the bridges, we've, you know, we've got some good anchor stores, but generally speaking, it's not on the same level as Eldon Square. And I think just in general Newcastle's laid out better at least still got those different areas you've got Northumberland Street you've got the monument area you've got Eldon Square so I I just feel as though Newcastle feels much more well planned out and well thought out as a city centre and Sunderland because it's grown up quite rapidly as a city it's just all bitty and different parts of it just don't gel together and work together and it's quite a difficult place to get around. Newcastle is better looking it's got better bridges it's got better buildings it's got bigger and better things but that doesn't necessarily mean it is better because some people don't like that some people just want to come and go right i'll have me bit of shiny amazing fantastic and then leave because i can't cope it's nice to have that commute between the two i would massively agree with that sunderland is the best of both worlds apparently as well one person was really shocked at the fact that sunderland was first when newcastle was 28th i'm not it's a shame isn't it (gasps) really <laughs> so Newcastle was 28 and Sunderland was number one. I'm not surprised. I'm a bit surprised because everyone says, oh, Newcastle's got this, Newcastle's got that, Newcastle's got this. Well, clearly. It, it's, it's bigger, better, and you shinier. You can have everything. But doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Doesn't mean it's nice then to live, then, is it? The fact that it's 28th means it's great to visit, but you can't wait to get out. <laughs> it's really interesting because, I mean, there's no doubting that Newcastle city centre is the better city centre. It looks nicer, it looks grander, they've retained a lot of their old buildings um, and it feels like a big city. You know, even the fact that the the mainline railway bypasses Sunderland and goes straight to Newcastle, I think just sums up that relationship between Newcastle and Sunderland. But what you've got to remember with with, with Newcastle, actually the city centre is quite small. There isn't a great amount of places to live in the city centre. The vast majority of it now is student accommodation. I mean, there is more student accommodation in Newcastle than you can shake a stick at. It's ridiculous. And it's grown up very quickly, Newcastle. And because of its big city status, it doesn't feel like a place where people can settle down. Whereas I think Sunderland still feels like a small town. It still has that kind of townly feel to it. Um, And I think that's the difference really between Sunderland and Newcastle. You know, you go to Newcastle for a big night out because it's always seen as having the better nightlife, etc. Sunderland is where you call home because it's much more homely. It's much more down to earth and it's not quite as grand and big as a a big city would be. I think that Newcastle is definitely an amazing city as well. Um, There's a lot of great culture over there there's a lot more going on in comparison to Sunderland however I do think that Sunderland is more getting its name on the map as well there's a lot more coming to the city but I do think that Newcastle still has a lot more going on do you know what might have a lot to do with it as well you've got to bear in mind Newcastle isn't we're both near the coast but we are we have a coast we have two two big beach areas I mean we've just had the uh the pages of the sea and that's been used um, all around the UK and we were chosen as one of the, the spots which by the way was phenomenal but there also is a lot of history in Sunderland mm. that you cannot forget that played a big part in the world wars both mm. we wouldn't have got chosen for something as special as the pages of the sea if it didn't mean something so yeah can, <laughs> can I just say for the second time uh, Newcastle was 28th I am surprised at that <laughs> I am surprised 28th Newcastle I'm quite surprised it's not in the top 10 I would have thought about 90th, to be honest, but that's just... Oh, a stop being so biased. <laughs> that's a football thing. Uh, 28th out of 35. Wow, so it really is near the bottom. Wow. That's, that's seven I, places on I'd the I'd love to honestly know why Sunderland got number one. Because we're great. Because we've just been saying all the benefits of why Sunderland is amazing, but we're biased on this. The cost of living can't be that, and must be really good. That's got to be one main thing that, that attracts a lot of people because. Do you honestly think it is affordable living? Is that is why? It, do you think it's expensive? I don't live in Sunderland, so I can't answer that. South Shields has got a nice beach, and that's where all the money's been spent. But there's nothing else happening. The, the words there, which is great for like people, with young kids and families, but South Shields is for people 
with very tiny children and people who are retired. If you're anywhere in the middle of that age bracket, there's nothing to do. Um, where Sunderland has a lot more things happening and there's a lot more to do. There's the cinema, there's the theatre, um, the Royalty Theatre as well, that is doing a lot more. Generally, obviously, the more north you go, the cost of living is much more affordable. And also, people obviously are friendly in the northeast, lots of call centres based, kind of in around Sunderland, Newcastle. Uh, so I think that's going to help as well, the fact that everyone sees it's friendly up here. So that's going to be a key factor in the fact that everyone gets on with each other, you know. So the company's coming here for a reason, and that kind of friendly aspect on that connotation, at least, of everyone being friendly, clearly sticks. And, like I say, house prices and things, the cost of living, you know, you can get a pint for less than £2 in some establishments in uh, Sunderland. I'm led to believe... There's, well, I'll put it on this way, there's, there's, not, there's not a huge amount of expensive areas. I'm not saying that there's the opposite. Like, there's a lot of poor areas. I think we've just got a good balance. Well, that's everywhere. Mm. Everywhere you go, even if it's a seaside town, a city or a little village, there's always going to be bigger and better. you got to remember as well, you've got the uh, you've got the, ra- the rail link as well, so you can either go to Sunland, from Sunland to Newcastle and commute all the way to London if you want. That's Which true, a lot of people yeah, do. you can. That's... A lot of people do. In fact, a lot of people go as it's far as It's actually Scotland. cheaper to commute from Sunderland to London than is Newcastle, London. There's a lot of people actually work in London um, for a couple of days and just have like digs down there and then come home about Thursday, Friday. Yeah, I could well imagine. <coughs> I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> it's, yeah. <coughs> I'm good. That's, a, that's like a fairy uh, a chew. A fairy sneeze. <laughs> So, thanks to the business owners based at the Enterprise Place and the Hope Street Exchange here in Sutherland for their cooperation and opinions. Thank you to you. Roll call. Fern Snailham of Unique Staffing. Jonathan Chambers of John Ark Creative. Uh, Abby Burgess and Ethan Lewis and Marshall from Intuit Media. And that's it. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> uh, that's it. Bravo, humans. A lovely episode of why Sunderland is number one. <coughs> Newcastle 28. Ah. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Do you, do you want to say that again? Because it's nice coming from your mouth. Which is it's very rare to say that, to be fair. Because usually most of what comes out of your mouth is just dirt and filth. <laughs> He's so rude. Why are you so rude? Because I speak the truth. No, you don't. I do. No, you don't. You're just plain rude. You just listen to what you want to listen I to. I do. And that's how I get through this podcast. <laughs> step by step, day by day. What, day by day you do a podcast? Step no. by step. You all listen, man, you look forward to podcasts. Step I know you do. Bit. Right, if you're going to start singing, I'm off. How about now? Because you singing generally is bad, but through headphones is a nightmare. Wow. So this is a new one. If you want to get involved in Speak Up Sunderland, why not come down and see us live? Live? We are real people, you know. Weirdly enough, Stevie will still be breathing, hopefully, by the 16th of January. You've avoided. still got time. From the murderer. And you'll see how hard it is to work with this person. Are you sure? I'm, I'm sure positive. I'm the one that needs the medal. We shall see when it's live. So come down to the Peacock in Sunderland that used to be the Lon- Londonderry? Is that right? Londonderry. The Londonderry? Aye, they are. So come down to the Peacock in Sunderland that used to be the Londonderry, right? <laughs> Londonderry! In- Whatever! Right in the city of s- city centre. Do you read backwards or something? If you seriously, are you, are you standing seriously on your hands brave reading? enough to come down. And watch us do Speak Up Sunderland Live. We, we are nice, really. Are when, you? when Betty's not there, I'm You're lovely. You're a nightmare. I'm not a nightmare. Are you sure? So yeah. come along, meet us, share your stories. We can't wait to meet you. I'll tame Stevie, I promise you. And please, please, please bring me sedatives or anything that will make me calm or... Cake. Even if it's drink. I know she'd drink responsibly. I like cake. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to do with that cake. I like cake. We loved cake, and you loved cake, Stevie. That cake's going right in your face, woman. You loved cake. When you see Stevie, you will know what I mean. You loved cake. I, lo- I loved the cake. You loved cake. <laughs> what does that mean? What am I missing? You loved cake. You loved cake. <laughs> uh, so head to our Facebook and click attending. Come and see us. Come and see us live. Come grab a bevy. We'll sit, we'll have a bit of a chin wagger. Yeah, come, and, come and grab a drink. I'm not buying, I'm not offering, but just please come and have a drink. <laughs> if you come if you come and speak to us and you're nice, I might consider buying, you know, like a Coke or a... Steve, you'll buy you a drink, I'm not. I'm just, I'll let you have something cheap. Happening. I'll either buy you a drink or I'll just give you Betty. Ew. Either way, they're both cheap. <gasps> <laughs> and oh, that's it. I've just realised I'm... Speak up Sunderland is now one presenter. Stevie I'm not, re- I'm not near the door. You are fired. You can't you fire me. You are nothing but You're not my rude. boss. 
guess again. Wow. If Stick you're my boss, I'm this leaving. Live, you're gonna have one presenter. It's gonna be me because Stevie's gonna get a size seven well, right up his. Here's the off. thing, right? If we did speak up, Sunland was just you. You know, note about Sunland. So put that. No, but the whole smoke. thing is about me going around Sunland, learning what is happening. So technically, you don't need to be here because Sunland do it for us. What was the name of the pit where the stadium light is? Why on earth would I want to know because that? Because it's in Sunland. It's where you're gonna be in the next five minutes if you didn't pack it in. Name one of the shipyards that was down down. On the riverside, down I'll the river find way. out myself. There you see, there's two key questions. Why do I need you? You know, no, don't tell us. God damn it. So that was the episode of Speak Up Sunland, and Stevie will not leave this pod. Uh, <laughs> this studio with a set of legs. <laughs> and legs he thinks I'm joking. He has no idea. She's quite scary, actually. Right, I'm off. See ya. Hi, I'll give you 10 second head start. I'm Nine, off. Bye. eight, seven, remove the headphones. Six. Five, four, three.